so I do have something. And it's been a while. Um, now, Mike and I have always been very open and honest that we were fans of Opie and Anthony. You know, Opie and Anthony, when we put Patrice on, when, when Bill Burr was funny and stuff like that. That show was one of the best shows. I mean, very funny stuff, some of the best bits. I mean, just great show. You even mentioned, you know, Bother the Media. They started the whole attack on the media thing, mm-hmm. which was hilarious and all that stuff. Um, I think we, I wanted to check in on Opie, see how he's doing. Do you want to check in on Opie? Sure. Let's check in on Opie. Jesus Christ, he looks... He looks... Like, I don't mean this objectively. I know, obviously, we are not fans of Opie. We've been pretty crucial, critical of Opie, but this is, for him, this is even for him, this is bad. He looks bad. Well, let's see what... Let, let's, let's. I thought it was Pharrell. No. This is Opie. Um, this is what he looks like now. Uh, David Butcher. When's the last time you spoke to Anthony and Jimmy? Uh, well, I started taking phone calls from Anthony when I did the um, the new show with Carl and Vic and Sherrod. Those were going very, very well. We did five or six of those, and I felt like there was a path to keep the ONA brand together. Yeah, and then the show was um, so bad, it killed everybody on it. Also, um, I got to give props to Opie. I mean, look, we can shit on him all we want. It's a nice view. That's a nice view. That's, uh, you know, God damn, it's a nice view. And I felt like there was a path to keep the ONA brand together. Um, but they were moving very, very quick on their end, and they really wanted us to move over to um, Anthony's joint. And I felt like it wasn't the right place for me. So I, I, I turned it down, and then um, that's my recollection. And then, um, you know... Can I ask a question? Sure. I'm looking outside. It's nighttime, right? Mm-hmm. Why is he wearing sunglasses? Because he's cool, bro. Oh, That's I didn't think cool. about that angle. Then the hate got really, really, really bad after that and continues, unfortunately, to this day. So um, as far as Anthony Fucking goes, haters, I, man. I talked to him for the last time on the phone four or five years ago. I haven't seen him in person in seven and Jimmy, I don't now ready for this thing that totally really happened. I know you heard it. I know. So did I. But I want everyone else to see this thing that totally really happened. Ready? I don't know if I ever told this story. So Jimmy uh, works out at the gym I work out at. And uh, I was leaving uh, the locker room and I opened the door and uh, <laughs> it was Jimmy. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you guys this. And I. My natural reaction was, so he was coming into the locker room and I was leaving. And this was the first time I saw him in, uh, I don't know, a couple of years. And uh, I swear to you, all I could muster up, it was just a natural reaction. I just went, ugh, really, really loud. You know when a kid's making up a story? And they go, I swear to you, and they stop five times. Mm -hmm. They go, I swear this is what, yeah. I owned him. And then walked by him and, and uh, left the gym. So I I guess that was the last time I talked to Jimmy. <laughs> Why are you laughing? But that was my natural reaction. Also, he walk- tells that story like I went, ugh, like as if he's making it sound like he beat his fucking ass in front of everybody. Like, yo, bro, I couldn't control it. I can't be stopped. I wonder what I would say if I saw him or whatever. And, and what came out was just a, ugh. Let's see. Uh, cool, whoa, the comments are flying by. Whoa, man. Yeah, interactive. You should have threw a protein bar at the worm's liver spotted head. Well, uh-huh. damn. Uh-huh. You're a savage, Opie, LOL. Jacob, did he respond? Jimmy? I swear to you, I have no idea. That would be no, no, no. You would know. No. That would be. You remember the story fondly. That would be one of the things. That, yeah. Then Jimmy said this. Yeah, I, I can recall any. I can recall altercations I've had very easily because they're altercations. Because usually your adrenaline's pumping. You remember everything. You know. I have no idea what he said to me. I think he was in shock that he was just opening up the door and I was on the other side, and I uh, I blew past him pretty fast with my. Ugh. I'm sure, knowing Jimmy as much as I used to, I should say, I'm sure, I'm sure he uh, he had a retort 
but I honestly could tell you I did not hear anything. But I'm sure he, I'm sure when he realized what the fuck was going on, he had a quick something something to say. But I blew by him. So freaking awkward. Yeah, Brian Bernard. It was really awkward, but it's kind of funny. Is it? Uh, now that's funny. Is it though? Andy, come on now. Uh, he obsessed over that for weeks, guaranteed. Ah, probably. 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 Is this, Forget about. Are we? Can I say it? I'm. I'm worried about Opie. To me too. Right, like it used to be funny to make fun of Opie, but like this is one of those like somebody needs to reach out to him because he's not he's not well. About who you dislike, dude. Focus on the future. Make good on the past. I, I've made good on the past. I've taken a lot of responsibility in um, when? a lot of the things. When um, I really like what I do now. You mean, so which is nothing. You do nothing now. Here's the thing. I, I obviously never out anybody, but I could tell you with, and you know, I'm you know I'm not making this up, Mike. Mike could tell you with 100 percent certainty that I do know people that worked very closely. I know people. I'll tell you guys who's leak yeah. is. Uh, oh, yeah. Very closely with with Opie, with Anthony, and with Jimmy. And I'll tell you this. Danny Ross. <laughs> Definitely not him. He's BFFs with Danny Ross. He Danny Ross me. has been feeding him info for Danny years. hates me. Um, <laughs> one, one, oh, he really fucking can't stand me. But it's no, the you, the, the, the... you don't like my Eskimo brother, Danny Ross? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Come on, continue. I'm sorry. Mm. Well, that would make you and Anthony Eskimo brothers, too. I, I also got to go to an event where I got to meet a lot of CIA people. FBI. No, it was a... It was a whole thing. Oh. 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 <laughs> it's like they're realizing it's a lesbian bar. Oh. 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 <laughs> so yeah, I'm friends with someone that used to, uh, with a, not one person, the few people that used to work with them. And I can tell you this with 100% certainty. Opie was going behind people's back. People that were were loyal when they were having that rift, right, right towards the end, they're having that rift. Opie, Opie, Opie. Opie went behind people's backs and was going to HR and management and complaining about people that were fucking completely loyal to Opie since day one that defended him all the time against all the bullshit. And then when he left, all of those things became public knowledge about like, hey, here's the complaints that were being filed against you from Opie. He was doing this to people around him behind the scenes for a long time. Long time. Very specifically during the Opie and Jimmy days. Which is weird because, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't, maybe that was just when he started spiraling. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I know he was always a prick. But <laughs> the whole Anthony leave, you know, the whole Anthony getting fired thing really just. Mm -hmm. It was like watching a fucking wing blow off of an airplane. It was like, okay, everybody's going down with this thing. But he started really being a fucking... And then remember, keep in mind, I want to remind everybody that Opie was fired. Um, the ultimate decision to do so was uh, after Opie was uh, filming their talent booker, Roland, taking shits in the yes. bathroom and then playing it on the air. Yes. And, like, everybody was like, you can't... like this. And this was in, like, what... 2016? 2017? Like, or 2015, maybe? This was not, like... You know, 10 years ago and shock jock stuff. Like, he was filming an employee in the bathroom. And he was like, whoa, it was a funny bit. And everybody was like... And then even even Roland was, like, pissed off at him. Of course. And he was trying to make it out like Roland was unreasonable. Like, whoa, what's your problem, dude? What, we do it for the goof. And I'm like, look, man, there's a lot of shit we all do to goof on each other. But I would flip if somebody filmed me in the bathroom, as I'm sure you would. Because there's just certain times where it's like, wait, you waited for me to have my pants down while I was taking a shit? Like, that to me is like a weird, vulnerable thing where it's like, you filmed me shitting? Um, it's hard, though, man. I'll be honest with you. It's really, really hard. People hit me up with this shit um, all day long. If I go on social media 
it's all day long. Yeah, so I know. Opie, I, I know a lot of people who, whenever they go online and they're famous for one thing because they accomplished one thing, um, there's a lot of people that um, bother them about the one thing. Like, for instance, um, Ringo Starr is a great example of somebody that is going to, if he's going to go on a talk show, they're going to ask you Beatle questions. They're not going to ask course. you Ringo Starr's all-star band with two R's. Uh, they're not going to ask questions about that. Uh, to, to borrow from uh, your, your buddy Jimmy's favorite band, Kiss, you're not going to have uh, Peter Chris or fucking Paul Stanley come in because they're promoting their book and just ask them questions about their book. You're going to be like, so when you were in Kiss... What was this like? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nobody gives you shit about your... Yeah, you can come on and promote your other things. But yeah, if, just get ready, Opie. Get ready to spend the rest of your life fielding Opie and Anthony-related questions on Twitter because that's all you did. That's all you have. Be grateful. Be grateful because a lot of people live and die without even having so much as that in life. Like, y y you, for a guy of limited talents managed to work the system pretty well for yourself be grateful i'm uh honestly i'm on the social media less and less especially twitter twitter's just garbage it's just an absolute cesspool Hot how takes. did you not laugh at his face I, it was just a natural reaction it was just to be like Ugh. so you said you decided to do a colin quinn impression when you saw norton yeah did you god oh oh and i said god too Oh God! Did you go? Uh, oh, you also remember that he said, "Oh God." Yeah. Did Did you say, "Uh, yeah"? What are you? Uh, what are you working on leg day? Stupid. Did you also do that? Did you say that to him on the way out? What's up? What, what are you? What are you doing? You're just kind of working on your your core or something, <laughs> dummy? That <laughs> too. Because I was so mad. I, I'm like, oh, really? Do you know why are you mad? Do you know how likable? Well, not likable, but do you know how redeemable he'd be? If he just came out and said, you know what, dude? Well, no, if he did that, everybody would say he was copying Bobby Kelly. You know yeah. what, dude? <laughs> yes. uh, but he should come out and say, I'm a guy who coasted through life with very limited talents. But I was able to get some of the funniest guys in the world together. Mm -hmm. And I was able to use that to negotiate great deals for us. And you know what? Three mediocre guys became fucking huge radio stars off that but i will admit that i made a lot of money i probably didn't deserve all of it but here we are and you know what? i don't even think people get mad but he still clings to this like 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 he was he was one of the guys man he was, well, he was in the patrice documentary for three seconds so i know i saw that um but he he it's not enough for opie to just say you know what we had a great run and Considering where I should be in the packing order of life, I'm just grateful that I made as much money as I did and I got out with my health and whatever. But he can't help himself. He has to constantly like, yeah, those fucking guys, right? Aren't they pieces of shit? It's like, get over it. This is like a guy who can't get over a fucking real breakup. It's like when you have a friend that like, when you have two friends, right? And they're dating and you meet them as a couple, but you're friends with both of them. And then they break up. And then one of them starts going, oh, I want you to be friends with her. She's a fucking cunt. You know what she did? And you go like, look, I'm not going to be hanging out with her alone or anything. And I'm not certainly not going to be going on dates with her. But like, if I'm at a party and she's at a party, I'm not going to be like, get her the fuck out of here. She cheated on my friend. Like, you know what I mean? It's none of my business, dude. 